Welcome back to another edition of Veterans Forum. My name is Rebecca Jennings. I am the veterans agent for the town of North Attleboro. Today we have a special guest um, that we wanted to highlight. This is another resource that is going to be very helpful for veterans and their families. Um, about getting organized. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so your name is Janine uh, Kavanar and you're Helpful Organizer. Yes. Th is that the name of your company? No, I just go by my own name, Janine Kavanaugh. I'm a certified professional organizer. Been in business nine years. I live here in North Attleboro, and I help people in the surrounding areas. What What made you get into this type <laughs> of field? I know I don't want to organize anything in my house. <laughs> well, I. Um, it just so happened that my sister and I were looking for a job at the same time. Mm -hmm. She found out about the National Association of Professional Organizers. Okay. It's a nonprofit association that started in 1985. Um, and we went to a local chapter meeting and she decided it wasn't for her and I decided I really wanted to try it. So I started helping family and friends and I am that type of person that's always been organized. I used to organize when I was little, and I've used the uh, skill of organizing throughout my career and throughout my other jobs and professions. And um, I decided I wanted to give it a try, and so I did. And it and just clicked, and yep. you ran with it and I made did. a business with it. Which, exactly. Which is great. And you're located <laughs> out of uh, here in North Attleboro, Yes, right? I am. Yes. So you're one of our local businesses. Yes. Yep. I'm Which a small great. business owner. Yeah. yeah. So uh, many of our veterans and their families have difficult organizing uh, not only their homes, but they got the VA paperwork and medical documentation and then maybe some things they have laying around their homes that they to just let pile up mm -hmm. and it can be very overwhelming. Um, so today we're going to talk about some tips and how to plan and organize um, those things that you have around your home. Um, so what do we need to do in order <laughs> to even start this whole process? How do we get uh, thinking about uh, becoming organized? Well, um, first of all, I tell people, you know, when I work with my clients, it's pretty much we go through like a five-step process. Okay. Um, when I work with them individually, they usually have a specific area in mind, and we call it our target area. Like and the backyard or the, you know. Or the kitchen, kitchen counters or the kitchen cabinets. It could be a closet, a storage area like a basement or an attic. Have they ever come to you and said, it's the whole home? Yes, <laughs> yeah, it could be like the whole home or like pockets in the home, you know, okay. pockets of clutter or piles or things that have been building up and haven't been attended to or, you know, kind of forgotten or just, And you know. I imagine it's probably causing them a great deal of stress. Right, right. Usually people call me when they're stressed or frustrated or overwhelmed with their situation, whatever their situation might be. Now, do you have family members that call on behalf of loved ones too? I do. You yes. do? Yeah, yeah. I do say that, you know, I'd be willing to work with anyone as long as they're willing to work with me. It, it's okay. We work in collaboration, so I don't just go in and, and organize for them. We work together through the process so that they are the ones making decisions and they're improving their organizing skills along the way. So they've actually had shows on this on TV oh, yeah. about uh, folks like yourself coming into people's houses and mm -hmm. I can imagine the, the stress that might come with it, uh, but you've been doing this for such a long time and like you said, it's a collaboration with the f whole family and uh, to be able to help achieve that goal. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, by starting out, you know, we pick that one area and, and the idea is that, you know, you schedule some time. So by making the appointment with me, I have a two hour minimum That's appointment. How you, that, this is how you start the process. That we start the process. So first you gotta commit to actually working on the, on the problem area or you know, just working on organizing in general. It's a skill, so the more you do it, the better you get at it. Do you help you them practice. like with a checklist or? Yeah, yeah. Do you do the first initial 
consultation with them? I do. I have a free one-hour consultation. We tour their home. They tell me, you know, what's bothering them, what's frustrating them, and what they might want my help with. We sit down and discuss this five-step process I've mentioned. Which we'll go over in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and um, then, then, you know, we decide whether we want to work together or not, and we schedule an appointment. The, the key is actually, you know, creating some time for them to do what they want to do, you know, to accomplish their goals. And how's so that atmosphere with that first initial mm -hmm. uh, consultation? How is that? It, it usually I mean, what are, what are folks in our audience expecting when they <laughs> do that first consultation with you? Is it a little nerve-wracking for some of the clients? Oh, yes. I mean, um, I always tell the story of one client. Um, she told me after the fact that in order for me to come, she was very nervous and frustrated. It took her a long time and a lot of encouragement to just get up the nerve to call me and have me in in the first place. And, and she said she had to take a Vicodin the first time Aww. I came so that she could that be, you know, calmer. But the idea is that I, I'm not there to judge or to um, criticize in any way. I'm there to just kind of evaluate and see how I can help you. And the idea is to be able to help you reach your goals. So whatever those goals might be. All right, so when I'm looking, uh, I go through my house twice a year, you know, do the spring and the fall cleanup. That's, That's great. what we call That's great. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking around and how do I know? Like I'm basing it on my own experience. If I haven't used it in the last year or I don't necessarily need it, then I get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, or it's not something that I'm using that on a daily basis or whatever. But how do you, tr I mean, is there a, a, um, a way for us to know what to get rid of and what not to get rid of? Mm -hmm. I mean, the pieces that are emotional connection must be the di right. most difficult. Definitely, yeah. Um, well, every, every person's different. You know, you have your own, um, I call it a tolerance level or your own, you know, guidelines for yourself. And, and the thing is, organizing is specific to an individual. So what might work for you might not work for someone else. And what might okay. work for me might not work for someone else. But they need to come up with some criteria and guidelines. So we talk about, you know, it's like, well, well, what is the guideline? Do you want it to be if you haven't used it in a year? Or is that not long enough? Do you need you haven't used it in two years? Or do you need you haven't used it in three years? And the idea being that once that guideline is set, it's much easier to go through the actions of organizing and making decisions okay. with a guideline than with no guideline at all. So by creating some guidelines and criteria. So um, a lot of them could be, you know, it's, if it's broken or damaged and you're not going to fix it within the next six months, then let it go. If it's you know, a sentimental item, how many do you want to keep? Do you want to keep a trunk full? Do you want to keep two? Do you want to keep 10? You know, what is that comfortable guideline or tolerance for you I and your family? I think you would be very helpful for my husband who has 12 trunks of military <laughs> gear that from all of his mobilizations and time in the military that I just won't let go. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I can definitely understand many of the folks in our audience are probably thinking the same thing. Uh, I have this emotional connection with these items and they're mm -hmm. probably hesitant about coming to um, a business such as yourself uh, right. because of that emotional connection right. uh, to those well, items. Well, my job isn't to make you or force you to do anything mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not willing or ready to do. You know, so you have to be, you know, ready for this process and you have to be willing. I mean, if your goal is to reduce, you know, or to edit out some of those things, then, then it would be my job to say, to remind you of that goal and say, well, you want, you have 12 trunks and you want to get down to six trunks. So let's mm -hmm. evaluate and come up with some criteria as to, you know, what is really important and valuable for you to hold on to and what are you ready to let go of? Okay. You know, and what's that, what might be some of the deciding factors in that, in that process. Does that make sense? Right. Um, <laughs> so some techniques uh, that if, if someone wanted to start small by themselves mm -hmm. um, before contacting you, um, 
what are some techniques that they might be able to do the baby steps right. to start moving towards possibly getting the strength enough to call you right. uh, to want to move forward with this? Well, I think some of the steps are, you know, basically just kind of sorting and gathering. Okay. You know, because, and, and that's the first step in the process after planning and, and scheduling, you know, is you kind of, you know, collect all of those things, you know, if they're everywhere or anywhere, you know, open them up and see what you actually do have, you know, and if you can make some general decisions or some easy decisions, like I call them the low hanging fruit, Okay. you know, if you can get rid of some things, then go ahead and edit out what you can and what you're willing to to part with, okay. you know, and, you know, just allow yourself some time to do those things. You know, if you need to actually schedule it, then go ahead and schedule an hour or two for yourself to, you know, kind to of start the process. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. Um, so we're going to go into how do you, how do you start this from A to Z? A so to Z. Yeah. tell us what's the first step? Well, um, when I work with my clients, you know, and I also teach classes, and so I call it like a five-step process. Okay. And you heard me mention it before, but the first step is actually the planning part, the planning and scheduling. You know, people who don't like to organize um, don't do it. They just, you know, avoid it or they procrastinate or they don't give themselves time to do it. They'll just right. say, oh, I'll take care of it later. I'll, I'll put it here and I'll take care of it later. And then the piles build or the clutter builds. And so giving themselves time to do it, whether it be daily, like a 15-minute cleanup or at the end of their work day, you know, a 15-minute cleanup or, <clears throat> you know, nightly a chore or an activity or daily an activity. That, that can help them through the process. Or if they need to schedule, you know, those one or two hours. They just need to plan it. And they That's need to the plan ahead. Step. That's planning. And also realizing what their goal is. You know, what, what do they want it to look like or what do they want it to function like when it's completely organized, you know. So give, give themselves an idea of, of what that looks like. Okay. So <clears throat> the next step is the sorting and gathering and categorizing. So you bring it all together. So if you're cleaning out a closet or organizing a closet, you might start with, and I tell people, start on the flat surfaces, you know, whatever's on the floor, whatever's on the counter, whatever's on the tabletop, you know, desktop. Start there in those flat surfaces and okay. kind of sort and gather things, you know. So in a closet, you know, how many so you're saying when you you're have. doing it in the closet, you're, you're looking where the shoes might go. We're pulling out everything okay. that's off the floor and we're sorting it and saying, okay, you know, what category does this belong to? It's general broad categories like tops and bottoms and footwear and accessories. Those are big categories. Okay. Yeah. And then you go through the process of, I call it confirming and deciding. So you confirm what you have. So you gathered it and sorted it. So out of all these tops, you know, y you can then decide how many do I want, need, and use. Okay. So, and that's the decision-making part. You know, the decision-making, a lot of people start with that. So they pull out things from their closet and try things on and make a decision. People have that, things in their closet that are over 10 years old. Yeah. And they're, they're like, oh, you know, I, all I need to do is lose, you know, 10 or 15 mm -hmm. pounds and I'll <laughs> fit right in that dress. Yeah, yeah. So and that's when the guidelines come in. So you can say, well, if I haven't worn it in the past one, two, or three years, and I don't see myself wearing it in the next one, two, or three years, then it's time to let it go. Okay. You know, and then once those two steps are, you know, three steps are, are established, then it's time to move on, and I call it the, you know, customizing and placing. So okay. then, then it's time to put things back you know, and in an orderly way, in a way that you can keep it that way, you know, so don't make it so complicated or, you know, hyper-organized that you can, you're never going to maintain it that way. So, and then the last step is the maintaining and the practicing of it, you know, putting things back in those daily habits and routines that we create for ourselves. Well, how do you create those? So do you, do you find that, you know, in the morning or at night or when you go to work, you have like a, a starting routine, you know, mm -hmm. what, what helps you start your day. And so 
those types of routines and habits are are basically organizing. Okay. You know, you're you're <clears throat> so at the end of the day, you know, what do you do to kind of so finish it's probably your day? a lot of repetitiveness. Yes. Uh, yeah. To keep this stay on it organized and right. Right. Which is what a lot of folks probably don't d don't do, and which might have led to mm -hmm. um, some of the clutter in their homes. Yeah, organizing I tell people is like doing the dishes or the laundry. So say you know your dishwasher is empty, your sink is empty, there's no dirty dishes in the house. That's that's order. And then what happens? Life happens. Natural disorder. Mm -hmm. So you you cook, you eat you make lunches, you make messes, you know, that's natural disorder. You get dirty dishes. And so then you have to reclaim the order by doing all the dishes. And that's the same with organizing. It's, it's part of a routine, it's part of your life. So the more you build it into your life and the more you practice it, the better you get at it and it just kind of happens naturally, organically and habitually. Now, I imagine not staying organized can really affect probably different parts of your life. Mm -hmm. um, any particular areas that you think that uh, it might affect folks or like little tips mm -hmm. just to give them a heads up, like if these are some warning signs, this might be uh, a cue for you to, to start considering, uh, you, know, you know, getting in contact right. with someone like yourself. Well, I think the warning sign would be if you're stressed or frustrated or overwhelmed with your situation and you're just feeling like there's no order, it's chaotic, and right. you know it's causing you stress or frustration. That's one. But an example I share often is um, I was working with a client in her kitchen and we were, were concentrating on the pantry. So we were pulling everything out and sorting it and categorizing it, our you know, first action step. And she said, you know, what is all this? And I said, why are there nine cans of marinated mushrooms here? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. I, I, I don't even like them. I, may, I use them for this one recipe that my husband oh, loves. My and she's like, so when that happens, it's, it's like organizing helps you save time and money because one is, you know, it probably she didn't realize what she had in the cupboard and she went to the grocery store and was like, oh, I'll get a can. So you're wasting money on products that you don't need or you're not going to use. Or they're going to expire, especially right. with food products. Right. Yeah. And then they end up in your cupboard, in your pantry, and they're taking up space and they're, they're getting mixed up with everything that you do use. So it's creating more stress and frustration for you there. The other is that you know, things tend to pile up. And so people are, I call it visual clutter, is they're constantly reminded like, oh, I need to do something with that pile, or oh, I need to clean up that pile. And it's constantly nagging on them and creating stress. So it probably stress. wears on them all day long. Yeah, yeah. Just like an, you know, a, an office that you, know, you find that you just can't work in because it's not orderly. You know. But some people, you know, again, it's different for everybody. Their tolerance level is more. You know, I, I, I pick on my husband all the time that his tolerance level for the dirty dishes is much higher than mine. <laughs> Me, I would want it clean more frequently and less dirty dishes, whereas he can go a couple of days, three days, and it's not, not a problem for it's him. It's like, wait until it piles up right. completely in the sink and then, and then I'll clean it. Right. And, and, you know, it's different a lot of times, you know, the problem is, you know, it's different for different people in the same household and then that creates problems. So that might be and another it, and cue. And it probably it, impacts the relationships with family members and yeah. friends when they come over and visit. Uh, they must probably, some conversations must start, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, may have, many of them may be very negative mm -hmm. uh, and that may affect the relationship yeah. of the and individuals. And that's another cue that, that maybe you might want some, someone to help you with this and, you know, and, and make your life and your home life and your home family situation better, you know, if you can improve that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now you just talked about how in the continuing to stay organized. Um, we're going to backpedal just a little bit sure. uh, on some 
resources um, while you're going through this whole process. Um, and earlier we were talking in my office, you, you had a whole list, um, which I'll have uh, in my office uh, so folks can be able to, um, be able to reach out to these different places. But can you list some of the, uh, the places that we talked about, the donation center drop-offs and, sure. uh, and things that people can use? Sure. So basically, you know, when you're, when you're getting rid of stuff or you're ready to part with stuff, there's, there's two options. One is that you're going to donate it to some place that's then going to resell it and the money's going to and the proceeds are going to go towards their organization or their their cause if it's a charity like the Epi epilepsy foundation exactly and there's an the other option is that um, the company is going to or organization is going to give it to some family or person or individual that's in need of it mm -hmm. so you know like um, church organizations or other organizations that give directly to those people in need which many of our veterans and their families in the community use those yeah, yeah. So there's two types of organizations. And a big part of my job is to help people kind of clear it out, to, to continue to um, edit out what they don't need, what don't want, and don't use. So I offer that as a service to, mm -hmm. you know, donate these things. So often I drop off to um, Savers right here in North Attleboro. They're a great organization. They are usually affiliated with a nonprofit, so some mm -hmm. of their proceeds go to that nonprofit. Like the one here in North Attleboro is affiliated with Big Brother Big Sisters mm -hmm. Association, and uh, um, Saint Vincent de Paul as well. You know they have a great store here in Plainville, and um, it's a it's a um, you know a constantly evolving and revolving you know new merchandise, new right. used merchandise. So. Yeah, and a very reasonable cost. So those are two organizations that I use often. For more specific um, donations, the Habitat for Humanities Restore in Attleboro does a lot of um, furniture, appliances, and, and um, you know, building supplies and materials. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you bought a door that didn't fit and you didn't return it or you know, a partially used product, and like we had a bunch of banisters that Folks we didn't use. Folks could go there too and purchase items, oh, yeah. right? Yep, it's a store. So, um, and but they also, you know, then the proceeds go to their organization as well as anything that they they collect that they might be able to use at a particular site. I think they use as well. Another one is Bay State Textiles. It's a textile company that um, does a program with the schools and they have drop um, bins outside the schools. And so any textiles, they'll take things that a lot of other organizations that just resell the textiles won't, you know, because they use the textiles for fillers or rags mm -hmm. or other, other things. So they'll take things that are stained or um, damaged. They'll take, you know, coat where the zipper's broken. They'll take a, a sleeping bag. Because those are all things that can be fixed. A stuffed animal, you know, because they'll reuse the, the parts and, and textiles. So, yeah. The other one is that I recommend to clients often is a shredding company, um, Doc Shredding Company and rent I them. think that would be very useful for a lot of our veterans and their family members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just the general population. I, how often should you do, like, the, ta the taxes, isn't it every seven years? Yeah. But I, I am ashamed <coughs> to say that maybe some of my paperwork, I still have my first initial um, enlistment, in which I enlisted in 1995. Right. I still have that. And, um, <laughs> well, I think that, um, again, it's that tolerance. You know, mm -hmm. what are you comfortable with? Do what you're comfortable with. But really... Um, all of your tax documents you should save for three years. For three years? Three okay. years, the um, tax documents and the supporting documents. Okay. And then the, um, because of the tax laws and regulations, you know, you have three years to amend your taxes and so does the IRS. So that's one of the reasons you want to do that. And then seven years, you know, from the date you filed. Oh, okay. They, you know, if they suspect any, um, you know, Yes. Any errors or any, you know, misclaims or any, you know, 25% or more, you know, difference in, right. in what you've claimed, then they'll, they, but if you, they suspect fraud, they'll, they can audit you anytime 
forever, however long. So these you know, uh, so. these shredding places, uh, they're they're confidential regarding their, yeah, their social um, security. I guess that was my concern. Yeah, what I was getting at. Social the security shredding personal. company that I recommend. Um, offers you a certificate of destruction. So what that means is that they take full responsibility for um, any information that might be compromised, and they have protocol and procedures in place that are, you know, real high security. So you have the option of dropping it off to them or having them come to you. Mm -hmm. But I know this shredding company, the whole municipal of Providence, Rhode Island, uses them. Oh, so okay. that's a good, you know, indication that their protocols are very secure. So that's you want to awesome. go with a company that that does have a good reputation, definitely. Right. Yeah. Now, is there any other organizations or resources that uh, you think would be great for our folks in our audience um, that they could use? Um, well. I think it's you know it's it's individual. So if you have particular need for something, so um, a lot of my focus when I'm working with clients and and you know I kind of tend to that to work with clients that want to you know get rid of stuff, reduce their belongings, make mindful decisions, and kind of clear out and clean out. So that's the type of projects that I work with my clients on. So there's lots of other resources specific to you know, that organization, you know, what that if they couldn't, organizing let's process. say if they can't donate it because it's, I guess, not donatable, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that's the right. word. Um, how about those big um, trailers? Mm -hmm. um, my goodness, I'm losing the train of thought here. Mm -hmm. um, how about re a dumpster? How about renting, uh, renting a dumpster? Is that something that folks can use yeah. that you would be able to help them? Yeah, there's dumpster companies, right, local. I try to use local companies that, uh, you know, anybody can can um, have access to. But there's also companies that will come in and, and um, take whatever you have, you know, whether they So they'll they're, come into your house? Yeah, whether they're, you know, a junk company or whether they're, you know, a company that then will recycle what they can from what you have. There are certain things that are, you know, harder to get rid of, like TV monitors, computer monitors, hazardous waste, some um, chemicals like pool chemicals or things like that. And there's are laws that are governing uh, those types of items. Yeah, yeah. So there are certain, you know, organizations that will or won't take them. So most of them are listed on their website, you know, what they'll take and what they won't take. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that, what you provided to us today is pretty extensive. I, I learned quite a bit, and I'm okay. sure our audience did too. Well, thank so you. I appreciate you coming on uh, the show. Um, thank very you. Very helpful tips. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, before we close out the show, I wanted to uh, remind folks in the area, we are having our second annual 4th of July picnic for veterans and their families. It will be on 4th of July from 10 till 2 at the Hockmock YMCA. Uh, we'll have free hot dogs and hamburgers for veterans and their families and uh, certainly their extended family, maybe their grandchildren. Um, and the pool will be open and we'll have uh, the facility open to uh, the, the grounds to be, uh, to be able to do activities and things like that. Um, even if you're a local citizen and you just want to come out and shake a hand of a veteran, I uh, certainly appreciate that too. So we are currently looking for donations. If you would like to donate, you can donate right to North Attleboro Veteran Services. Uh, and those donations would go directly to the 4th of July picnic. I want to thank you for your time today and I look forward to uh, the next Veterans Forum where we'll highlight another resource uh, to assist you. Thank you and have a wonderful day.